Hey. It was good. We record. For real? Yep. Oh, What's up, y'all? This is Nick with From the Ground Up DIY. And today, I'm going to show y'all how to build a laptop tray. For this project, I decided to use a 1 inch by 12 inch by 2 feet piece of poplar board. And this is a little sketch that I made for my laptop tray. And what I plan on doing first is cutting my board down to about 20 inches. And for the left side of the board is where I'm going to have my phone holder. And this side can also be used for a mouse in case you want to use a mouse for your laptop as well. And on the right side of the board is where I'm going to have my laptop placed. And I'm going to cut out six holes which are going to be used for air vents. And when I have my laptop on the tray, hopefully these holes can keep my laptop cool so that it won't get too hot. And that's really the main reason why I decided to make this laptop tray in the first place. Because normally like when I'm sitting on the couch or laying on the bed, and I have my laptop in my lap it'll get real hot so hopefully with these holes it'll keep my laptop cool and for these air vents they're going to be nine inches long and one inch wide and I plan on having them an inch apart from each other so I started by pulling out my table saw and measuring out my piece of poplar and then I cut it down on the table saw to 20 inches after that I went ahead and drew the line work out for my air vents and for my phone holder and to start this off I first drew a line 6 inches away from the edge of my board to distinguish the left side of the board from the right side and then I started drawing out the lines for the air vents and to start this off I drew a line 1.5 inches away from the line that I just drew to start the first air vent and for each air vent I made it 9 inches long and 1 inch wide and I skipped an inch in between and I repeated this process until I had 6 air vents drawn out in total and for my phone holder I decided to make this 4.5 inches long by 10 and 16 of an inch wide and this is my finished line work. I was about to use the jigsaw to cut out the holes for the air vents but after looking at the board for a while I decided that I wanted to round over the ends of the air vents and I didn't want to leave them just in a rectangular shape and to do so I used my compass to round over the ends of each of the air vents. Now that I'm done with that I went ahead and pulled out my drill so that I could drill a couple of pilot holes so that I could begin cutting out the holes for the air vents. I used my jigsaw to cut out all the holes for the air vents and the biggest problem I ran to while cutting was trying to cut around the curves and it was hard to do this because the curves had such a small radius but the easiest way I found to cut the curves was to do a series of straight cuts first and then going around the curve and it was easier for me to cut it and stay on the line that I drew. I then pulled out my router and used a one half inch scrape bit and I set my router to a one half inch depth and then I routed out the hole that's going to be used for the phone holder. When routing out the hole, I accidentally made a little dent in the corner, and to fix this, I used some wood filler to fill the corner in, and ooh, please excuse my hands, y'all, I didn't know they was that ashy. After I put the wood filler on and let it sit for a while, I went ahead and sanded down the board using my orbital sander, and I started with some 80 grit sandpaper and worked my way up to 120 grit sandpaper. Now that the sanding is complete, it's time for the finish, and for the finish, I decided to go out my norm, and I decided to use three different colors of stain, and I used Cabot Early American, Verifane Red Oak, and Men Wax Espresso. To start off the finish for the board, I first put some Men Wax Pre-Stain over the entire board, and once I got done with this, I then put some painter tape on the board to section off where I was going to stain first. And for the stain, I plan on going with the pattern of the wood. So I first started with Cabot Early American. And once I had put that on there and let it dry for a little bit, I then rearranged my painter's tape and then went ahead and used the Verifane Red Oak. And I repeated the same process and then used the Minwax Espresso. And I also used the Minwax Espresso on the back of the board as well. I let the stain dry overnight and this is what the board looks like the next day. To make the colors pop out a little bit more, I decided to use some urethane and I put one coat on the front of the tray and one coat on the back 
and I let it dry overnight and then the next day I noticed that on the back of the board it was a little bit flaky and this was because I had the tray laying flat down instead of having it propped up. So after I noticed this, I went ahead and grabbed my orbital sander and used some 220 grit sandpaper and sand the whole board, the front and the back of the board lightly. And then I put a second coat on the front and the back and let that dry and voila, here you have it, the laptop tray. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I really love how this laptop tray came out. I love the color, the way it shines and just how I'm able to use it. It's really good for multitasking and I also like just relaxing with it, just being on my laptop and being on my phone. And I love how everything is laid out on the tray. But make sure that you like this video, comment and subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments below if you think about making this laptop tray. And please let me know on the things that I can improve on because the main goal of my channel is for all of us to become great creators step by step. So if y'all help me, I'll be able to give more back to y'all and we'll be able to help each other become great. So make sure y'all comment below and we can chat it up. But until next time, peace, many blessings, and I'll catch y'all next time.